Hey guys, how you all doing? I'm Paul the Tech Giant and today I'm going to be giving you guys some tips and tricks for your new B9 OLED. Now, I say B9 OLED, but most of these tips and tricks that I'm going to be showing you guys in a minute, you can pretty much use on any of the new models and even some of the older models even. Um, I know I've previously done one on the C9, but I thought I'd just do a new one uh, for you guys for the B9 models because a lot of you guys have been asking me questions that I did cover in that video. So I thought I'd just do a fresh one and uh, hopefully it'll reach a lot of you new buyers out there and hopefully help you along the way with the usage of uh, your new TV. But like I said, if you've got a C9 or an E9, hopefully a lot of these tips or tricks can be implemented on those TVs anyway. Before we get into the video, I just wanna remind you guys about the giveaway that we're doing. Now we've teamed up with the guys at box.co.uk to celebrate the channel name change and the launch of my new social media pages. Now we've got six prizes to give away. We have five uh, Netflix vouchers worth £25 each and one top prize of an LG soundbar worth £600. Now to enter, all you've got to do is be within the UK and over 18, and I will put a link in the description where you can enter. Now for everyone outside of the UK, I'm not going to forget about you guys because I'm going to be giving away a Google Home Mini, and all you've got to do to enter that is uh, be a subscriber to the channel. And a uh, closing date for both of those giveaways will be the 8th of December. Now, if you do have any questions about uh, anything that you see in the video today, please leave a comment below. I try to get back to every single person who uh, asks a question or leaves a comment. And uh, yeah, if I do miss anyone out, I do apologise because I do get quite a lot of day, but I do my best to try and get back to everyone. So yeah, feel free to leave a comment and uh, please let me know what you think of the video. Please bear with the video. It's not going to be the shortest one because I've got a lot to get through. So please stick to the end. So let's crack on. Right, so first tip or trick. Well, really, it's just more of a little tip, really, than a trick. Um, might sound a silly thing to start with, but we'll start on the outside of the TV if you want to look at it like that. And this is something that so many people do not even realise about. It's unbelievable until I mention it. And I guarantee there will be someone watching this now. And when I point out, they go, oh, I didn't know that. So anyway, the first thing I just want to point out is when you get this TV out of the box, there is a film on the back of this TV. You wanna make sure you remove that because apparently it can cause um, heating issues with the TV. And there are so many people that do not realize that there's one attached to the back because on the front, they put pull tabs on it and make it clear that there's one on there. But the one on the back, if it's been applied properly, you can't see any air bubbles or anything like that and it can be hard to see. So. Might seem to seem a bit of a silly one to start with, but it is very important and so many people do miss that. It's unbelievable. So yeah, first thing is make sure you have removed the film off the back of the TV. Next up, sticking with the theme of being on the outside of the TV as such now, and uh, that is how to control the TV if you have lost your remote or anything like that. Now, in the middle here, if you haven't seen my unboxing video, you might not know about it, but underneath here, there is actually a little button. Now, when you press that button, if I can, there we go, it will bring up a menu and each press of the button will scroll through the menu so you can change your channels, volume up and down and change the inputs which is, like I say, handy if you have lost your remote control. Moving along now, and uh, we'll have a look at um, something to do with the remote. Now, get your remote, and you have got a settings button there. Now, one press on that will bring up your basic setting options there. So you've got aspect ratio and picture and all that sort of stuff. But if we come back out of that, and if you hold down the settings button, so just keep your finger on it, that then will take you into to your main menu. So one press for the sort of shortened version of the menu and one long press for your main menu. 
Now, whilst we are in this menu, I'm going to be uh, showing you how to change the pointer size. Now, what you're going to want to do to do this is go down to accessibility, click on that, and then you have got pointer options. Now, you simply click on this. And there you there you go. You've got uh, three different sizes of pointer to choose from. So simply click on one. And as you can see, it changes it to a small one there. Then you've got your medium and then your large. Also, you can change the uh, the tracking speed, which uh, gives you the option of slow, normal and fast. Now, there is actually a quicker way to get into that, uh, which, again, I will show you now. Another little tip here and or trick, whichever way you want to look at. Now, if, again, you want to get into the accessibility, all you do is simply hold down the mute button. So one long press on that and that should fire straight into the accessibility. So again, change your pointer or, you know, your accessibility settings. So audio guidance, subtitles and all that sort of stuff. So a handy little one to know there. Next up, I'm going to show you guys how you can do a update on your TV check what uh, software version you're running and also how to turn off the automatic updates, which I recommend. Now, I did cover this in a previous video, but uh, just for you guys who haven't seen that, all you simply do, again, grab your remote, a long press on the settings button. That will take us into the main menu. Then we need to go down to general. Then go to about this TV. And then this will bring up our current software version. Then you have got the option there for the automatic updates, which like I said, um, I always toggle off and then we'll just manually check it myself. And if you want to check for an update, you can just click on that button there. And uh, yeah, you can just manually check for an update. It will say yes or no, which I just do now. It says checking for updates and no updates found. Now, one thing I get asked quite often is how do I know um, how many hours that my TV has been used for? Now, there is a way to uh, do this. And unfortunately, if you're in the UK, it seems to be that we miss that option here. I don't know why. And a couple of other countries miss out on it. But in lo lots of parts of the world, you do get this option. And we're going to go long press again and go into pretty much the same area as we were a minute ago. So then general and then about this TV, and then you will go into TV information. Now, I'm not gonna do this because it will re reveal too much information about the TV that I probably shouldn't give away, but once you're in that menu, um, you will find it just in there, hopefully, and it will show you how many hours that your TV has been used for. Next up, I'm gonna show you guys how to tune the sound of your TV to the environment it is in. Now, the way it does this, it utilizes the microphone, which is, uh, there we go, just at the end of your remote control there. And it just sends out a series of sounds to the, to the remote, which uh, the mic then picks up and just analyzes and just tunes it to the environment, basically. So the way we're going to do this is do, if it focuses, we, we all know what it is now. Anyway, it's a long press on the settings button. Then we're gonna simply go to sound, then to AI acoustic tuning, and then start new sound tuning. So I'll click on that now. And yeah, we're all ready to go and just sort of sit in your normal seating position, point the remote towards the TV and uh, simply press start. So let's crack on. There we go. Test has been successfully completed and it should have now adjusted the sound to the environment the TV is in. Also, once you finish that sound tuning, if you go to the next page, it gives you the option to listen to it with uh, the tuning off 
and the uh, the tune in on so you can actually hear the difference for yourself and then you can apply whichever one you prefer next we're going to look about the self diagnosis of the tv so if you think you may have a problem with the panel or anything like that this is a handy tool to check out now again long press on the remote control down to general again about this TV, then we go to quick help, and then that will bring up the diagnosis for the TV. So you can check status of TV. So here we can check the OLED panel, and what that will do is uh, run a little test when you press start, tell you it's all okay, hopefully. Let's go back then you've got the uh, magic remote there you can check as well and then Bluetooth uh, illuminator sensor and so on and so forth so uh, again a handy thing to uh, to know if you are experiencing any problems with your TV you can maybe uh, rule them out with this test now, one thing I've just been doing, I've not realised, is been using the pointer on the TV and not actually showed you guys how you can even get that up. Now, sometimes it'll come on pretty much by itself when you're just moving the remote around, but there's two ways to sort of manually force it to come on. And one is to move this scroll wheel round. Now, just move that and simply the pointer will come up there. Or, if I just leave it for a few seconds for the pointer to disappear, the other way is to get your remote and just give it basically a shake and then your pointer will appear on the screen. Moving on now and we will have a look at some of the stuff within the home menu. So for this, one press on the home button and that will bring up all our sort of main uh apps and stuff like that and these can all be customized in an order uh which you prefer now to do that all you simply do is if i get the point wrong one let's say youtube now press down on the scroll wheel here again that's something i haven't showed you guys is this like thumb wheel here as well as just going up and down does push down that is your enter button so when you push down on that that will enter into uh, whatever you are on. So yeah, to move an app around, simply select your app, hold down on the enter button, and then you can just drag it along to wherever you want. And then let go, and then I just press the back button, and that brings you out of it and puts the app uh, where you want it to. Now, just like a mobile phone, you can get up your recent apps and close down your recent apps as well. Now, to do this, easiest way is to simply do a long press on the home button. So you do that, and there you go. It will bring up all your recent apps. So you can use this as a shortcut to fire into something or simply uh, delete off your recent apps. So you just simply put the pointer on the cross and click them off and that will get rid of them. Now this next tip is probably one of my favorites and one I think most people would probably use and find it useful. Now this is a tip on how to create a app shortcut. Now for this, all you wanna do is simply pick an app that you wanna shortcut. So I'm gonna use YouTube as an example here and I'm gonna fire up YouTube. Now we've got YouTube up and running, all we're gonna do is grab the remote and decide which one of these uh, buttons that we want to uh, select as our shortcut. So you've got one to nine. For this, I'm gonna simply use number one and what I'm gonna do is just hold down number one and then it will say, do you want to add YouTube to quick access one? I'm gonna say yes. And there you go, that should now all be added. Now, if I come back out of YouTube now, and I simply hold down number one, that should 
launch straight into YouTube. And there you go. How good's that? Like I say, it saves a lot of messing about and button presses. So yeah, create yourself a shortcut. Now there is actually a, another way to do this as well. And also how to delete off your shortcuts if you've got some there and you want to get rid of them. Again, grab your uh, remote and hold down zero. And then that should bring up your uh, menu there for your shortcuts where you can delete them off. Or again, you can add some. So if I say number two, I'll press add. And then that will bring up all the things that I've, I you know, might want there. So you've got your yeah, live TV, I've got my Skybox there, Now TV and so on and so forth. So you've got all your apps and stuff in there. So a uh, really handy thing to, uh, to note and something that I use every single day. Now, if you're enjoying this video far, I would really appreciate if you would do this next little trick for me. And all you've got to do for that is get your home menu and go all the way to the end or one from the end should I say and highlight this little pencil or pen icon click on that and then go to add YouTube channel now once you're in there you just want to type in the tech I think we all know what it's going to say now don't we giant and then once you finish typing that in, with any luck, go to search. There we go. I come up there and uh, all my videos will show up. And then sit, simply then click on add to home. And then what you want to do is go all the way to the end there and put me right at the start. And then the great thing about this is each time that you um, highlight that, it will come up with all the latest videos from my channel. So uh, please, I'd really appreciate if you would do that. Now, another good one that I've got here for you guys, and that is how to get up the audio description and also how to control um, other devices, such as like an external box, like a Skybox, and get up information about that connected device. So it will tell you like the resolution and so on and so forth. And one other great thing is how you can have a uh, split screen mode as well. So I will show you that lot right now. Now, what you're gonna do for this is on the remote, if it will focus, come on camera, it ain't gonna focus. It's gonna play silly buggers, but anyway, there's three dots here. I think it's three dots, I can't even make it out with this thing. Why isn't it focusing? There we go, pain in the backside. Right, so do a long press on that, and then it should come up. Audio description is now on. And to turn off, again, just a long press on that one. Now, if we do a single press on that, that will bring us up where we can um, control like I say, like I said, like a skybox or whatever like that. Now, initially you can do this when you set up the TV, but for anyone who may have skipped over that or didn't do it for maybe a device that they've now got connected, you just want to then go to universal control setup. So we'll click on that and I'm going to click on my set top box, but obviously you've got options for other things here. And Got it connected to HDMI 1, I'm gonna go on to next. Now ask if your TV is within one meter of the device, which mine is, and I'm gonna move on to the next part. Now the next bit, it's asking me uh, what box I've got, and I have got a SkyQ box, so I'm gonna click on that and move on to the next menu. And there you go, it says universal control is completed. So I'm gonna uh, press done. And now what we're going to do is go back to the dots, press on that. And now, with any luck, there we go. We've got all the uh, stuff up here for the Skybox. So I could turn it off. Go to menu, which obviously I've got up at the moment. Yeah, basically you've just got all your uh, controls there for it, which is handy. And obviously now you can just use your remote to navigate around that. But also, you have got your um, info here. So if you simply click on that, that will bring up 
um, what is basically going on with the display, what it's getting. So it's a 16 by 9 um, signal coming in there. Um, 2160p and then your sound there, PCM. So yeah, all uh, all pretty good. And the other thing, again, going back to the uh, three dots there, is your multi-view. So simply click on that. And then you can watch uh, like a split screen to to change which one, um, whichever one it is, obviously, just click on the little downwards arrow there. And it brings up the options of which HDMI you want to select. Or on the other one, um, sort of you've got what we've we got here, cable, antenna, satellite. So yeah, I don't personally use that option that much, but you know, some of you guys may find it useful, so uh, it's there if you need it. Moving along now, I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, download an app and a uh, good little app if you uh, got a new TV and you just sort of want to uh, demo it and try it out like uh, its best of its abilities, if you want to look at it like that. So again, want to get up the home menu and you're gonna to wanna to move along until you get to the LG content store. Now click on that and you've got the option for your you know, apps, movies, TV shows and all that. I'm gonna simply go to apps and this is where you find likes of YouTube, um, Spotify, what else have we got in here, Plex, and so on and so forth. But uh, one good one, this, oh yeah, you've got Chili up there as well, that's always a good one. But this one I recommend, which is the Dolby Access one, which is just some uh, bit of content which will show off your display. Uh, you know, if you want to show off to your friends over Christmas and that, it's always worth downloading this one, I think. And this, uh, so you've got, it plays Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos as well, so yeah. Want to install that? Just press on install, and within a few seconds, hopefully, it should uh, download and be uh, ready to go. And then, when you go back to your home screen, if I get that up, it should uh, be on there. So, and again, simply click on it to launch. There we go, and there we have it Dolby Vision. Dolby Atmos. Now, if you want some other demo stuff, there is actually some things built into the TV. Not everyone knows about this. So again, get up your uh, home menu and you want to go to photo and video. Now, there are some photo samples on there, but more importantly, there are some video samples. So simply click on that. And then you have a couple of demos there, again, which really show off the TV, especially this one. Um, really shows off those black levels, knock the lights off, run this and blow all your friends and family away. Right, and finally, I'm going to show you the gallery that I've just been running in a lot of these uh, sort of tips and tricks in the background. So again, get up your home menu and all you want to do is uh, move along to gallery. Click on that. Um, it will bring up a load of different options of uh, galleries that you can run. And it basically just turns your TV into a picture frame. So yeah, there's ones to download. I've already downloaded a, a load of them. And uh, yeah, just simply click on whichever one you want. And it will rotate through them like that. And there you go. It will turn your TV into a picture frame. And uh, again, you ain't got to worry about sort of screen burn or anything like that. Because like I said, it rotates it. So you could leave that run in and it's going to be absolutely fine. Looks really, really nice. So there you have it then, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and you found those tips and tricks useful. And if you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, maybe think about subscribing for more of the same in the future. So thanks very much for joining me today and hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.